Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. So for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this gorgeous ring. It is so pretty. I love it. It's just stunning. This is what the band looks like. And um, I got the idea to make this ring from a pendant that I did a while back using beads from the Dollar Bead Box. So this is the pendant I'm talking about. Some of you might remember this. Um, I got these oval beads here from May 2018 Dollar Bead Box. And when I sat down and started playing with May's Box, I remembered this pendant and how I did... Um, this really cool weave with the oval beads and I thought man since these are so much smaller than these I should try to do a ring and I knew that I would have to do it differently like here I have this coin shaped bead that I actually bezeled both sides I bezeled that bead in there and then I did the larger beads and then I embellished it even more with beads at the top so um, I knew this one here would have to be different I couldn't do a bezeling of a bead in the middle but um, I just took and I have a hole there in the middle and I just put this really pretty um, I think it's a resin rose bead it's an eight millimeter bead I got it from Amazon I think there was 60 of them in a pack in six different colors I'll put a link down there in the description bar for you guys if you don't see it, I probably forgot about it so just ask me and I'll share it with you anyways I put that rose bead there but you do not have to have this rose this is an eight millimeter rose you could just do any eight millimeter bead you want that fits in this hole. You could do a gemstone, pearl, whatever you want. And I was going to do a pearl, then I remembered um, the rose there. So, um, this is just so pretty. And by the way, I actually have two of these that I made. So, this ring here, these pink beads, they're not oval shaped. They're actually teardrop. And I love this ring so much. I made this ring. I took it apart, again, to make it in the video. And I but you know I should make another one so I went through my bead stash so listen up because here's some bead alternatives I went through my bead stash and I found these teardrops that I got from a dollar bead box a while back and they are let me look at my notes here they are six by eight millimeter so from hole to hole is eight millimeters and then from side to side is six millimeter and they are teardrop and they work in this ring and the ovals work exactly the same way so you can use oval beads or teardrop beads and these are check beads now the oval beads are five by seven millimeters so there's just a little uh, size difference but the ring still works it's so cool so um, I'm going to go over the list of materials and tell you everything you will need. I'll also give bead alternatives and I will, um, you know, put everything down there in the description bar below the video. So make sure you check that out. Here's the list of materials you will need to make a ring. You will need 6 feet of 8 pound fire line or 6 pound monofilament. You will need a size 10 beading needle. You will need one 8 millimeter bead. I'm using a rose, but you can use a round bead. I'm using 14 3 by 5 millimeter gem cut rondelle beads, and these are from the dollar bead box. I'm using 10 5 by 7 millimeter, or you could do 6 by 8 millimeter, and they can be oval or teardrop. And I am wondering if bicones will work for this. 8 millimeter bicones. But I'm not totally for sure, so that's an experiment that I'm going to leave for you guys to try. And you're also going to need 10 6mm check druck beads. These here are also from the Dollar Bead Box. These four here are from the Dollar Bead Box. I'm also using 32 3mm check fire polish beads. Now, I'm using 32, but if you have a smaller uh, finger, then you'll need less, and if you have a bigger finger, then you need more. I'm also using 11 or seed beads, and I'm using Miyuki, but I think that check might also work for this. So this is the list of materials, and remember, I always put the list down there in the description bar, along with notes, so make sure you check down there. So first we're going to make the top center of the ring here and put the rose in. So I'm going to pick up all of my uh, 3 by 5 millimeter rondelles. And I was thinking, you know, rondelles, 3 by 5 millimeter, 
they are three millimeter this way but this way they're five so maybe if you don't have rondelles or if you've already used them and you want to make more rings um, you might be able to get away with just using three millimeter check fire polish beads and possibly 6OC beads but they have to be good quality like uh, um, Muki or Czech. I love Czech. They're my favorite. Th those might work but I'm not for sure but that's just an alternative. So uh, here is my 10 rondelles sliding them down. I'm going to leave an 8 inch tail Here's my ruler. Right here is eight inches. I'm gonna hold it here. Take my needle. I'm gonna pass back through all of these. I always get stuck on my desk. It drives me crazy. Can't do anything about it. Okay, so that's eight inches, right? Right. Okay, so now I'm going to tie a surgeon's knot over and under. Pull this down. Over and under twice. Pull it down. And I will tie another surgeon's knot. Okay, so now I'm going to pass my needle through one of the rondelles. Okay, just like this. And now I'm ready to add my rows. So here's my rows. I'm going to pick it up. Um, you could see my knots here, just barely could see it. I'm coming out here. I'm going to come up here straight across. Okay, and I'm going to do like a figure eight. So I'm going to take my needle and pass through. I'm going at an angle to the bead that's straight across from this one. Pull this through. That rose pops right in there. I'm going to take my needle, pass down through the rose. Okay. Pull it tight and then I'm going to take my needle and pass through this rondelle that I came out of earlier. Okay, now I'm going to do this again. This needs to be reinforced twice. Okay, so back up to the rows. Pull tight. I'm going to go through this bead. Pull tight again. Then through the rows again. And I already lost um, which side did I go through. This side has only been through once, so there I go. Through this bead. Okay. Now I'm pulling this tight. So now we have this. Okay. So now I'm going to pick up my oval, my round and my oval. And by the way, if you're doing teardrops, you would pick up the teardrop by the pointed end, and then you would pick up a druck, and then you would pick up the teardrop by the rounded end. So that way, the pointed ends are all in the center of the ring. Okay, so now I'm taking this needle and I'm passing it through this rondelle and through the next rondelle. And I feel like I'm working backwards for some reason. Just because I'm going to the left. That's what it is. Okay, so I'm pulling my thread through. 
and pulling it tight and you will have to adjust these beads and pull it tight. So I'm just going to work on the back side of this because I like to work to the right. If your flower is up but you're coming out the right side then just keep going or it, it doesn't matter whatever if you're left handed or right handed really. Okay so now I'm going to pick up and one oval this time in one round and then I'm going up this oval bead and then I'm going through two of the rondelles pull my thread through and before I pull this tight I'm just gonna go back to this one pull that tight and then pull this up and um, you may find that when you go to add beads that it's probably best if you pick up your beads here's my oval and my round okay and then slide them down and then go through where you have to go and this kind of helps with them staying in place where you need them to be So now I have this. That's what it looks like from this side. Okay. Still going. I'm going to do this all the way around an oval and around through this oval and through these two rondelles. Pull tight. Again, oval and around. It is pouring outside. It has been raining for like a week now. Okay, so I'm going through two rondelles. Okay. And then another oval bead and around through this oval bead here and through the two rondelles. My cat is terrified of the rain. There's not even any thunder and he's just scared. I just heard him running behind me. Okay. Still going. Oval round. Pass through this oval bead and through two rondelles. Just making sure that I'm pulling it tight every time I do another stitch. Oval and around again to this oval and through two rondelles. We are almost to the close here. Here's an oval and around through this one and through two rondelles and I'm actually stepping up because I'm closing this so if I can get it all in one shot I'm also going to go through that oval bead right here. Pull this through and look at that. I have my tail on the top. Oh there it is. I'm just going to pass this through the back right there. Okay, picking up my last round bead, I'm going to pass through this oval and through that rondelle. And again, before I pull it down, I always come back and pull that thread tight. Okay. And then I go up through this oval just like that and I have this. That's pretty. It's not pretty just by itself but it's too floppy. It needs more uh, beads to keep it stiff. So now I'm gonna go through this green bead. This round one. Okay. Now in between each gap and it's getting loose on me right there, I don't know why. Now in between each gap, 
each gap I'm going to put a three millimeter check fire polish bead and pass through the next round and I do this all the way around picking up one three millimeter and through the six millimeter round these beads that I'm adding are the ones that we are going to use to embellish the top with seed beads it's going to be so pretty Okay, get one more left. And these beads are also cinching in the um, piece. So right now it's flat, right? But when I pull this tight, it's going to dome. That's how it domes for us. And I noticed that this one's more domed, and I think it's because they're 8 millimeter instead of 7. So now what I'm going to do is reinforce this. I'm going to go all the way around so right here is a knot so this is my marker so I know that I have to come all the way around uh, that's where I started at so um, I'm just gonna go through all the beads again Th these beads are heavy they're six millimeter so it's a good idea to go around this a second time <laughs> and pull it tight as you go Okay, and I'm just going to pass through, right here's my, where's it at, it's right there, I'm just going to pass through this three, and now I'm ready to embellish the top, I'm just going to make sure that it's very tight, so here's a close up of it. So now I'm going to do the seed beads and on this one because I used 8 millimeter teardrops I had to pick up 4 seed beads, my 3 millimeter and 2 seed beads. But these here are 7 millimeter so I'm only going to be doing 3 seed beads, my 3 millimeter and 2 seed beads. Alright, so I'm coming out of here and I'm going to go up through this rondelle. Pull that through and then I'm going to pick up two and I will zoom in a little bit closer here okay so I have my two and now I'm gonna go down through this three millimeter and tighten this up okay I have to pick up three and pass through the next three millimeter on the outer edge. Okay, and then go ahead to tighten this up. I also found to push this up towards the center. It's a little problem I had with the other one. It was sitting funny. And again, I'm picking up three, my three millimeter, and two seed beads. Through the next rondelle, Picking up two seed beads and going down through this three millimeter bead. Pulling it tight, picking up three again, going through the next three millimeter here on the outer edge. And again, pulling it tight. OK, 
Okay, three again. My three millimeter bead and two. Do the next rondel. Picking up two seed beads down through this three. And then picking up three. And then through this next three millimeter on the edge here. Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Pick up three again, three millimeter and two seed beads. Coming out of here, I'm going to go into the next rondelle. And then I pick up two seed beads and I go down. And I like to pull this tight with my fingernails before I pick up the three here and pass through the next bead, the three millimeter on the outer edge. I'm just so I have made it all the way around and I pulled my short 8 inch tail back up from the bottom because I realized I'm going to have to tie it on the top. I can't tie it in the bottom because it's domed. So I uh, pulled it up. Okay, so now I have to pick up two seed beads and go down this 3 millimeter to finish this very last one. And then I'm going to pick up three and then I'm going to go through this three millimeter here. And Catzilla is here today. Can you see him? Nope. He's, he's just like, there he goes. He's trying to get on the windowsill from here and I don't know why because he can get on it from the bed. Okay. So now I have it closed. So here's the thing that I noticed with this ring. So we added this rose bead on, right? Well, the bottom of the rose is round, okay? And then, you know, the petals are on the top. And with this one, I noticed it. And I'm also seeing it with this one. Do you see right here my threads? Right there are my threads, okay, that are keeping my rows in. So my threads are going this way, okay? Now because they're going that way, my rose is very sturdy. Look at this. It's not moving. It's not wiggling, okay? And if I were to do it like this, so hold it like this, okay, so now my, my threads and my rows are going this way. Now it's wiggling. It wiggles. And I've actually noticed that some of the roses will actually lean a little bit because the hole is not dead center. So to stop that, I want to add the ring band on the sides right here because then it will not wiggle. Look at this. It is not really wiggling unless I really push it hard. So um, I, I want this. So again, my thread path is this way. Okay, so I want to add my ring band here. I'm going to pick up two 11s, a rondelle, two 11s, a 3 millimeter, two 11s again, a rondelle, and two 11s. Just like that. Slide them down. See right here, this is the part I just did, okay? So my ring band is going to be attached right here. So now I'm going to pass my needle through these three beads, pull it through, and we need to reinforce this. So I'm just going to pass back through all of them again.
Okay. I'm going to take my needle, pass up through two seed beads, my rondelle, and two seed beads. Pull it tight, but not so tight that your entire needle just slips off your, your thread. So this is the ring band I'm doing. It's kind of like herringbone, but I have a bead in the middle instead of just having a thread in the middle. Please excuse my crazy cat. I'm going to pick up two 11 of seed beads, a 3 millimeter, and two 11s. I'm going to go down through these two here and through the rondelle again and through the two seed beads again so I'm, I'm reinforcing this a third time now which is great okay going back through all of these again if you can't get through with monofilament if you're doing six pound you could have just not reinforced it the second time like I did and just do this so this would actually be your second pass through all of those beads Okay, then I'm going back up through these 11s. Okay, now I'm picking up two seed beads again. Make three millimeter and two seed beads. And I'm passing down two 11s, just like that. Okay, and then I'm taking the needle and I'm going through this three millimeter. And then I'm going up through these four. And I'm pulling this tight. So now I have this. So I'm just going to continue on with this weave. I've done this. Uh, before in previous video picking up two seed beads my three there two seed beads okay coming down through two going through this three then I have to go up through four Pull that tight. Just like that. Continue on picking up two seed beads, my little three millimeter, and two seed beads down through these two on the side. Go through this bead in the middle. And then pass up through four. Picking up two, my three millimeter and two seed beads again, passing down through two, oops, through this bead in the middle, and then up through four seed beads. So I'm going to do this two more times and I'll let you guys do it by yourself. So again, you're going to pick up two seed beads. The three millimeter and two seed beads. Pass through two, going down. Then pass through this middle bead. Then pass up through four seed beads. Don't forget to pass through the middle bead. I've done that a couple times. I've had to go back and take it out because my you could see my thread overlapping in the middle there where I forgot to pass through that middle bead. Okay, picking up two seed beads again, 
my three millimeter and two seed beads going down through two going through the middle and then up through four okay so that's pretty much it I'll show you how to close it up just remember you have this little gap here so when you wrap this around your finger you want to have a gap like that because then you know that that's that air you need right there to do the decorative clothes all right so just keep going I'm now ready to close my ring up so I'm going to flip it over and I need my needle to be coming out of this three millimeter bead so I can do this part right here okay so I'm going to pick up two seed beads I'm going to pick up my rondelle and two more seed beads I have to come straight across so right here is where I'm going to add my uh, beads close it up again pick up two seed beads and rondelle and two seed beads coming out here I'm gonna pass through this check fire polish bead okay so now it's attached but I have to um, do some things like over here you can see that these here are connected it's not connected here I have to do that so um, I'm gonna take my needle and pass through these beads pull the thread through then I'm gonna go through here again so I'm reinforcing this part of the ring a second time okay then I'm going through these beads and up through two seed beads in the band pulling that tight then I have to go through the three millimeter and then I'm gonna go through these two seed beads and then I have to go through here because there's no thread path here so here I go again a third time through here but that's just fine it, it makes the ring strong so now I'm passing my needle through these three here and um, we have a couple of different options on what we can do after this Okay, so now it's all connected. So I can either take my needle, go back into the ring and tie knots, or I could take this thread and go around the entire edge here where the glass um, drugs are in the check fire polish. Or I could take this one and go around the outer edge. So let's see. Um, I think that I will do this thread here the one that's coming out of the center the 8 inch I think I will do that in the outer edge so I'm gonna take this one back into the band and tie knots in the band with this one alright so I'm just gonna pass through a few beads if you want you could reinforce this more so maybe I should do that let's see how many threads are in there I think it's good okay I'm gonna tie a knot right here so just take the needle pass it through there make a loop and go through it twice if you're doing fish in line you might have to monofilament it you might have to tie um, a single half hitch knot the, the double thing is my thing people don't normally do that they just do it one time but I like to do it twice because I feel that is more secure okay so then I pass through two beads again and I tie another knot and I go all the way down here and I turn around I'll go through here if I feel that I need to turn back around and come down this side tie knots and now this thread here right here you can see my knot just barely see it what I'm gonna do after I tie knots with this one I'm gonna put my needle on here 
I'm going to go straight down through this um, oval bead and then I'll have to flip the ring over and go like this and I'll have to um, pass my needle through this drock right here and then I can start tying knots in between these beads and you can tie a knot in front of every bead because they are larger beads so um, as soon as I come out of this bead I'll tie a knot there, go for that bead, tie a knot there, go for that bead you only have 8 inches so it's not going to get you too far maybe through half of the this here and um, just go as far as you can using a pure thread because it makes your ring uh, lasts a lot longer so that's it it's not too bad to make it's, it's pretty simple I didn't have a lot of problems with this one and here is my other one I love them so much so this is it I hope you guys enjoyed this video please like this video leave me a comment subscribe if you want to see more of my videos and like me on Facebook and don't forget to share pictures of the jewelry we've made from my videos on my Facebook page and follow me on Pinterest thanks for watching